Okay, this is a video he just did called, What Did I Just Watch? Now, because I've started talking about Gene a little bit, he's getting a few more views on some of his videos. He's pretty pathetic. He's done a lot of videos, all of me, and he doesn't get very many views. So after tonight, after tonight, we're going to just take Gene's oxygen away by not going and seeing what Gene's doing, because it doesn't matter. Pray for him. Pray for him. He's as pathetic as a creature gets. And see, right there, another lie we can pile on your bonfire, Jonathan. I most certainly am not the most pathetic creature out there. There's plenty out there that are much, much more pathetic than I am. They're just not the ones exposing you. That's all. You better repent quick, Jonathan, or you know what's going to happen. Your supernatural gifts won't work anymore. Shush, bird. I wonder, why are you telling your viewers to stop watching my pathetic channel, JJ? What exactly don't you want your followers privy to, Jonathan? Because if you're going to sit there and try to portray me as some type of pathetic buffoon, that just might be what's known as bearing false witness, JJ, you have no idea what the content of those videos even contain, do you, Jonathan? Because if you did know all the contents of the videos on my channel, and you still told your followers that they shouldn't watch my channel, because you know perfectly well that the case that I'm laying out against you and your antics is going to start overflowing very, very soon, Jonathan. And it's just going to be a matter of time until people start to realize that you're 100% no lying guarantee. Well, let's just say that that guarantee had a lot of holes in it to put it nicely. So let me take this opportunity to drudge up one of my old videos. You know, JJ, one of my old videos that was on my previous channel line up before I scrubbed everything off of it. But know this, JJ, this is only happening right now because it was you who resurrected my channel. This all lays at your feet, Jonathan. So as I hit play, I hope you and your followers, Jonathan, will enjoy this. <laughs> if you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. The lie can be maintained only for such time as the state can shield the people from the political, economic, and or military consequences of the lie. For the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie. And thus, by extension, the truth is the greatest enemy of the state. <laughs> okay, in our country we have what's uh, something going on, a propaganda technique that's called gross, grosse luga. But the grosse luga means the big lie, and I'm going to show it to you. It's a Hitler propaganda technique, and what you do is you make a lie that's so colossal, so crazy, that the population knows that no one would even think to tell a lie this big unless it were true. And then, so first thing, it's called the big lie. It's grosse luga, big lie. It's got to be a big one. And then what you do is you pound that same lie over and over and you repeat it over and over and over and over and over until it becomes a truth in the minds of the people that are hearing the lie. Do you know what you're looking at? Let me tell you what you're looking at. You're looking at Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim, read it. The spirit of Elohim, angels, magistrates, gods, moved upon the face of the semen. Read it for your blind Cells, all y'all that are under condemnation. Because L's coming for you, all of you. 
It's a Hitler propaganda technique. Grosse Luga. The big lie. There you go. And the spirit of Elohim, oh, God's angels, magistrates. And isn't that convenient? They're melting into semen. So the spirit of Elohim moved over the semen. The spirit of Elohim moved over the semen. You pound that same lie over and over and you repeat it over and over and over and over and over. So the spirit of Elohim, God's angels, magistrates, moved over the semen. Remember what Genesis 1 says? The spirit of Elohim moved over the semen, right? And it's a bunch of angels melting into semen. Well, that's funny. That's exactly what the Bible says in Genesis 1. And the spirit of Elohim, God's angels, magistrates, moved over the semen. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you this important message. It's just a, isn't it a treat to get to watch these videos? It is. And by the way, guys, don't forget to support the ministry. We're still here because we rely on the support to get this stuff done and to pay all the bills. And I'm not kidding. There are some bills. So, the spirit of Elohim moved over the semen, and you repeat it over and over and over and over and over. And here's a big altar of Elohim melting into semen. Genesis says, and the spirit of Elohim moved over the semen, and here it all is in a big altar. Boom. It's got a penis and a vagina. Well, that's what it says in Genesis uh, 126, over and over and over and over and over. And in Genesis 1, verse 2, and the spirit of angels, Elohim, moved over the semen. You make a lie that's so colossal, so crazy, that's why they hate Johnny. <laughs> okay, you're looking at a bunch of angels melting into semen. Okay, that's what you're looking at. Let's go look at Genesis 1, verse 2. Boom. <laughs> Vargo. Hey, everybody. I hope everybody's doing okay out there. It's been a while since I put anything out concerning everybody's most favorite false prophet. But uh, I wanted to take a little break in order to see which way I wanted to go with it. Now, I've been contemplating back and forth with myself as to whether or not I was even going to do any more videos at all. But I came to the conclusion that I'm going to do kind of a grand finale of sorts so I can bid John John a proper farewell. You see, there's a way Johnny Boy teaches his doctrine that always seems to leave a person with more questions than answers. And that's a convenient strategy for JJ because it puts him in the driver's seat. It puts him in the position of having all the control over the information because he's forcing you to accept everything on his terms because you know whatever anybody asks it has to be thoroughly scrutinized before he'll do one of three things he'll either answer your comments by telling you that you know less than nothing he'll totally ignore the question completely or he'll delete the question entirely so what I think I want to do with these last few videos is I want to show everybody who even cares about what Klex deceptions are. I want to point out what I think he's doing. But I'm not going to be trying to provide anybody any answers. No. What I want to do is provide everybody with tons of questions. And that they should be demanding that Klex provide all the answers. That's what he should be doing anyhow. He should be answering people's questions. I mean, from the very beginning of his ministry, Clack has always said that he repeats himself over and over because that's the best way to teach people. But as we've seen at the beginning of this video, and what I think is the truth, is that he's very in tune with all the requirements for using what's called the big lie. And he does it in a very convincing manner in order to indoctrinate his followers. I mean, if it was good enough for Hitler, I mean, surely Johnny would love to incorporate it into his propaganda. So as I'm sure you've probably guessed already, I'm going to start off this video with J.J.'s lovely interpretation of Genesis 1, verse 2. And the spirit of Elohim moved over the semen. But even though this is number one on my list, we have to go to another one of his insistent teachings in order to debunk it. 
Now everybody should know already just how smart JJ is. I mean, he tells us all the time. So when he explains what any of these definitions mean, or shows us the proper way to apply words, we all need to take him seriously, and know that he would never, ever try to lead anybody astray. So let's head to the New Testament, where J.J. shares the correct definitions for the word spirit. And he tells everybody how the word is to be used. Look at the word spirit right here. Take a look. Verily, I say you must be born again. But look at the word spirit. It's capital S, right? Spirit. It's capital S. Well, let's look at the word spirit real quick. Let me show you something. <clears throat> From G4154, to breathe hard, that is breeze blow. Now, everybody pay very close attention right now. That is human, the rational soul by implication, vital principle, mental disposition, etc., or superhuman angel demon here we go superhuman and angel or demon demon that's the same as a demon or i want y'all to look at this little word right here there's a huge difference here or so it's one of these it's either the it's this rational soul by implication vital principle mental disposition or superhuman, an angel, demon, or, or, divine, God, Christ, Spirit, the Holy Spirit. It's so you have one or the other. When you look at the word pneuma, you're either a one of these. You're either a superhuman, angel, demon, or the divine, God, Christ, Spirit, the Holy Spirit. So you are either one or the other. Okay, now that we let JJ get his little superhuman angel demon definition out of the way, I want to show you a collection of instances where he demonstrates exactly how you tell the difference between the bad superhuman angel demon spirits you know, the ones that are controlling everybody until they get converted. And the divine God Christ spirit. Who's the prince of the power of the air? <clears throat> it's going to tell us right now. The spirit. Oh, that's a little less, isn't it? Look, that's a little less, isn't it? Look, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So look, before you get saved, who's your daddy? The spirit. Little s, little s. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and the spirit. Capital S. Look at the number. Capital S. Look at the number. So you either have a superhuman angel demon breath running you or 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 you have the divine god christ spirit the holy spirit over and over and you repeat it over and over and over and over and over now what ready see john 3.5 that's capital that's capital remember the number don't forget the number so you have a superhuman angel demon spirit that's running you or you have the divine spirit of Christ, one or the other. You don't give up. So, are you getting the point yet? If it's the superhuman angel demon spirit, it will always be declared by having a lowercase s. But on the other hand, if it's the divine holy God Christ spirit, it's always going to be capitalized. I mean, that sure seems like a pretty simple rule to follow, now, doesn't it? I would think so, but I wonder why Johnny Boy can't seem to follow his own set of guidelines when it comes to Genesis 1, verse 2. Who do you want to belong to, the Lord God or God? Who, who do you want your daddy to be? I want the Lord God to be my daddy, because he is. Wait a second, JJ. If you want the Lord God to be your daddy, wouldn't that be the spirit that's spelled with the capital S? Like the same capital S found in Genesis 1, verse 2?
let me show you something. Ready? Genesis 1. Genesis 1. And the spirit of Elohim, is that word spirit capitalized? It's a yes or no answer. Moved, look right here, of God. I'm going to highlight that. The spirit, look. Is that word spirit capitalized? It's a yes or no answer. The spirit of Elohim moved over the face of the waters. Semen. Is that word spirit capitalized? It's a yes or no answer. <laughs> well, since I can see that you don't want to answer, JJ, I guess I'll help you out a little bit and do it for you. The answer is yes. Yes, the word spirit in Genesis 1 verse 2 is capitalized. And since you already set the guidelines by saying that the capitalized spirit means the Holy Spirit, I would have to say that you clearly debunked your own theory that it was the spirit of Lucifer hovering over the semen here in Genesis 1 verse 2. Wow, you're pretty good, JJ. You see how you screwed yourself all over, all by yourself? All in your very own words. But before you step in and start trying to explain it away by saying that, you know, the Lord showed you some type of stipulation for this particular verse, especially since he showed you that big semen-coated altar and all, I think I'm going to have to step in here a little and make sure that if you try any of that horse crap, you're going to have to explain away a lot more than this little bit you've already demonstrated already. For instance... If you're going to try and stick with your explanation that the word God, as it's used here, it has to mean Lucifer, because the word Lord isn't in front of it. Oh, and, and if I hadn't told you before, which I'm pretty sure I have, but I'll reiterate it here again for everybody else. Your explanation for determining between Lord God and Elohim God, I mean, it's weak at best, Johnny. When the word Lord is not in front of it, it's not the... Lord God. What? The Lord God. The word Lord is in front of God. You suck. Now I'm going to put up these verses that say Spirit of God. Here's ten examples. No one can come with scripture. And I know that there's plenty of people out there besides me that would love to ask you to explain how all these verses are referring to the spirit of Satan. Now take a good look at them all, JJ. I don't see one bit of difference here. Nothing in the spelling. No. All the S's are capitalized. Oh, oh, wait. We're in good shape, too, because I don't see one instance where the word Lord precedes the word God. So this should be easy for you, J.J. I mean, you've been repetitively shoving that Genesis 1 lie down everybody's throat for how long now? Surely the Lord's shown you another nine altars that represent these verses. Or maybe we need to turn another one of those zooming bags upside down or something. I don't know, but I know you've got an explanation. I know you can do it, J.J. Don't forget to use the gifts of wisdom and knowledge you said the Lord bestowed upon you. To one is given the spirit towards the word of wisdom. Johnny has that gift. Wisdom. Johnny has that gift. To another, the word of knowledge. Johnny has that gift. Knowledge. Johnny has that gift. Gnosis. Knowing. That is by implication knowledge to know absolutely. Uh huh. That's why I can speak with such authority and confidence because I don't think it. I know it because I don't think it. I know it. You suck. And what's up with always referring to yourself in the third person? I mean, it sounds extremely self centered. It's like you want to be Jimmy off Seinfeld. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy's ready. Jimmy's got some new moves. Go, Jimmy. Check Jimmy out. <laughs> Jimmy's down! Johnny has that gift. 
wisdom. Johnny has that gift. Knowledge. Johnny has that gift. Now one of the tactics he'll use, or at least try to use, is he'll try to compare the use of the capital S for the word spirit that it's because it's describing the spirit of a collective sum of angels that make up the capitalized version of the word God, H430. And he'll try to play his E Pluribus Unum card by saying, one out of many, therefore it's a capital S, spirit. You know, and if you got enough spare change hidden in your couch cushions, I suppose you can buy that answer if you want, but that's up to you. Like I said earlier, I'm not here to try and give you any specific answers to anything. I just want to be able to provide you with questions. You can find your own answers. See, now watch this. Clack's going to try and demonstrate that the word God used in Genesis 1 verse 2 is not the Lord God. And he's going to do this by comparing it to Isaiah 61 1, where it says the Spirit of the Lord God. Now he's comparing God and Lord God, but I want you to ignore that, and I just want you to focus in on the word spirit. Genesis 1, and the spirit of Elohim, the spirit, look, the Ruach, the spirit of Elohim moved over the face as the part that turns of the waters. Semen, okay, now listen, I understand you might be struggling with that a little bit. Let me show you something. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. See, not God. The Spirit of the Lord God. Notice how they're both uppercase S's. Therefore, that should indicate the Holy Spirit. So we have a pretty good idea why Isaiah 61 1 is using an uppercase S here. And that should be because it's being used here to describe God, not Satan, right? But how are we supposed to know that for sure? Let's watch Johnny Boy connect the dots for us. He's going to go to a verse in the New Testament, and it's Luke 4, verse 18. And here is where we find Jesus reading from the book of Isaiah. And it just happens to be the very verse that corresponds to chapter 61. And what you're going to see is that it's saying the Spirit of the Lord and the word Spirit is in uppercase. Then JJ is going to label it for us as the Holy Spirit. So thank you, JJ. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. So Jesus is standing there, and they deliver to him the book of Isaiah. And he found the place where it is written, the Spirit. There it is, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord. So, if the uppercase spirit in Luke 4 means Holy Spirit, and Jesus was reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1, and the word spirit there is uppercase, that automatically means it's the Holy Spirit. And if that same uppercase spirit is being used in Genesis 1, verse 2, I mean, think about it. What's the most logical reason for them using it here? Why? So they can covertly say that this is the spirit of Lucifer and all the fallen angels? How does that even start to make any sense? I'm not asking your opinion. Your opinion means nothing. Your opinion is superfluous. Look it up. You suck! Well, let's take a look at at least one of those other nine examples I got. Let's see, Genesis 41, 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? So, J.J., is this referring to the Spirit of Satan, too? I'm going to tell you how to answer it. Read the definition of every single word. I'm not going to do it for everybody. You suck! Now we all know that he's not going to answer anybody. So let's get a little context on it and then you can ask JJ for yourself as to whether this is referring to the spirit of Satan or not. Go explain it yourself. 
Okay, so we got to go back a little bit to when Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers to the Ishmaelites. And they, in turn, sold him to a guy called Potiphar, the captain of Pharaoh's guard in Egypt. Now, the Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered in everything he did. And because of that, he became Potiphar's personal servant. Where Joseph, you know, he pretty much ran Potiphar's entire household. But then, Potiphar's wife started hitting on Joseph and wanting to have an affair with him. But try as she might, he still refused to have sex with her because he didn't want to sin against God. But she kept trying to seduce him, and one day she grabbed him by his cloak. But he wriggled out of it and took off. But she still had the cloak. And after all that, she was mad because he was always running away from her. So she turned around and made a false accusation against him and said that Joseph tried to rape her. And look, he left his cloak behind. There's your evidence. So yeah, she set him up, and the next thing Joseph knew, he was sitting in jail for something he didn't do. Now I'm just trying to give you the Reader's Digest version here so we can get down to that verse that I want to look at. Now there were two other people at that time who worked for the Pharaoh who also got thrown in jail with Joseph. And they both had some weird dreams, and they had no idea what they meant. Genesis 40, verse 8. And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. Now, I'm not going to go into what the dreams were, because it doesn't matter. But to make this short, Joseph's interpretations of the dreams were spot on. And it was a little while later that the Pharaoh started, he had a couple of dreams of his own that he couldn't figure out. He couldn't figure out what they meant. His wise men couldn't figure out what they meant either. But the one guy that was in prison with Joseph, you know, the one of the ones that Joseph interpreted the dream for, well, he worked for the Pharaoh and he remembered just how Joseph had interpreted his dream. So he told the Pharaoh about Joseph and they went and got him and brought him before the Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee, that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. So again, long story short, Joseph interpreted the Pharaoh's dreams as being seven years of abundance, and then it was going to be immediately followed by seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. So Joseph, he let the Pharaoh know that they needed to stock up on food during the years of abundance so they'd be ready for when the famine hit. Because it was going to be bad. I mean, so bad that nobody would ever even be able to tell that they just had seven years of abundance. And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God. And God will shortly bring it to pass. And now that brings us to the verse that we needed to look at. Genesis 41, 38. But I'm going to read 39 in there as well just to finish it out. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Okay, now with all this, the, the Pharaoh was so pleased with the heads up that Joseph that gave to him, and because of his foretelling of what was going to happen, they were able to be prepared for when the famine hit. And the Pharaoh was so pleased with Joseph that he made him second in command. The end. <laughs> now I know that was kind of long, but it had to be done. Everybody can go over the other ones on their own in order to understand them and come up with whatever realizations they come up with. But for this purpose, the purpose of pointing out Kleck's crappy teachings, I felt, you know, I felt everybody needed to see this one in particular. So just out of the people who've seen this little bit so far, and with a little context added in for clarity, who thinks that Genesis 41 verse 38 is describing the spirit of Satan? 
Nobody. What do you mean, nobody? I just showed everybody seven verses that had eight instances of the word God, H430, Elohim, the exact same number for the word God in Genesis 1, the very word that Johnny Boy will damn near have a coronary over in order to prove to everybody that it means Satan. But I don't think there's anybody out there that's going to say that this is the spirit of Satan. But you know what's going to happen, don't you? I know exactly what the little clackites are going to say. So let me put that out there on the table as well so everybody's on the same page. They're going to say that when you go to Genesis 39, it clearly says that the Lord, H. 3068, the self-existent eternal Jehovah, he was with Joseph. And it was the Lord who made him prosper. And it was the Lord who blessed the Egyptians' house for Joseph's sake. So right there, it establishes that it was talking about the Lord God throughout the entirety of the chapters. And you know what? I can see it. But that doesn't matter one little bit to me. And you want to know why? It's because I'm following your cult leader's directions to a T. Here, listen to his condescending directions again. And you show me where I'm messing up his clear instructions. So now, let's get down to this. So, we know that this is not the Lord God. You know how you know that's not the Lord God? You see the word, so God created man in his own image. Do you know how that you know that's not the Lord God? I'll show you how you know. Because in Genesis 2, it says, In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. When the word Lord is not in front of it, it's not the Lord God. What? The Lord God. The word Lord is in front of God. You suck. Now, do you see the word Lord before the word God? That's a yes or no, JJ. Do you see the word Lord before the word God? Well, neither do I. So according to Kleck, this has to be Satan. It has to be. Can anybody else out there see how illogical his reasoning is? How can this even work this way? It can't. And that's why he will never, ever, ever go over certain parts of the scriptures where just the word God, H430, is written. He won't do it. Oh, and wait till the video where I bring up all those verses. Boy, there's some doozies in there. And like I said, he doesn't have a proper forum for asking any kind of questions at all. I mean, do you think he hasn't been asked about his Genesis 1 verse 2 theory? He's been asked on more than one occasion, but there never was any type of reply. This one was from well over a year ago. I mean, how could this comment slash question be any clearer when addressing what I just went over? Jonathan, you say that the Spirit of God found in Genesis 1-2 should be read as the Spirit of Elohim and is basically the Spirit of Lucifer and his henchmen. That sounds simple enough, but my dilemma is that the Spirit of God is found 13 more times in the Old Testament, such as Genesis 41:38, And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? Are all these instances of the Spirit of Lucifer? And I didn't get any reply on that one. He deleted that account. Okay, here's another example of a comment that went on the chopping block. Jonathan, you said that the spirit of the Elohim moved upon the semen. I understand the comparison to the altar, but if angels are spirit and man wasn't created for another six days, I can't understand how the water was referred to as semen in verse 2, especially if it wasn't created yet. Now that, even that one deserved a little bit of a reply, Johnny. But no, it got deleted, and that account eventually just got the old chopping block altogether. Okay, here's one that's more recent. February 19th from this year. Hello, Jonathan. 
I've heard you on numerous teachings explain the important differences when defining the word spirit. The uppercase S will be used when it's referring to the divine Christ spirit, but the lowercase S refers to the superhuman angel demon. If this is the way we are to understand these distinct meanings, could you please explain why the word spirit in Genesis 1-2 is in uppercase? and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Since this God is Lucifer, why would he have the honor to claim the uppercase S, especially since he is an entity of evil? I hope you'll be able to respond, and I thank you very much for your time. Like that does any good. But then I get this response from this guy, AJW. He already explained this in previous videos, which you can find here on his video playlist pages and on his website. Uh-huh. So I wrote back to him. That sounds great. Could you provide me a link or the name of a particular video I should search for that covers his teaching? He has a big library of videos and I scanned the titles of the last six months but failed to see anything. It's possible I overlooked it, so if you would be most kind. Yeah, and I didn't hear nothing back from good old AJW. I have more, but there's no reason to go over them all. I mean, you get the gist, don't you? I got the same non-response, and you guessed it. This channel doesn't exist anymore either. Does anybody out there see a constant theme with the channels that keep getting deleted? Are they being deleted because I'm on there spewing my doctrine and arguing with him or his other subs? No. It's because of the content of my questions. He don't want anything to do with trying to answer any of them. So they go bye-bye. Then he can go back up there on his soapbox and keep pumping out his repetitive drivel. You know, showing everybody the same old verses over and over and then telling us how blessed we are that he shares his holy load of crap with everybody else. And I'm almost certain that this AJW goof is just some cleckite that runs cover for JJ. If it isn't JJ himself, which I'm certain he has pseudo accounts to do just that. See? It's a nothing channel. And I'm still waiting there, AJW, for that precious information you said he already went over. What a liar. And even if he ever does decide to, you know, answer anything, he'll divert. Here, here, just watch this. This is a perfect example of Cleck answering what he actually deemed as a good question. Look, some people have come with some legitimate questions. I saw a very good legitimate question on Psalm 60. Psalm 60, I believe it was. Nope. Maybe it was Psalm 61 or something. It was a legitimate question, and I went, hey, good question. And let's see. Hear my cry, O Elohim. Look, attend to my prayer. That's a legitimate question. I'm going to tell you how to answer it. Read the definition of every single word. I'm not going to do it for everybody. Quit making me the guy, oh, well, go explain this. Go explain it yourself. Don't be lazy. You suck. Well, where are my manners, John John? After acknowledging that that viewer had a good legitimate question, even raising her confidence level by reading the question out loud for everybody else to hear, I mean, that was awesome. And even though you finished up by basically giving her a big F you and kicking her to the curb all while you're sitting there calling her lazy, I'm going to let you shamelessly plug your channel and ask for more money. Because I know skydiving can be expensive. But I wanted to make sure that I let everybody see the positive effects that you instill upon your viewers. And that when they give you all that under the table non-taxable income, They'll know exactly what kind of good ministry you run. You're a blessing, Johnny. A blessing. I saw a very good legitimate question on Psalm 60. 
it was a legitimate question and I went hey good question that's a legitimate question quit making me the guy oh well go explain this go explain it yourself don't be lazy a deal's a deal JJ here you go during that time I'm required the Lord has shown me you have to do something for me and I will be risking my life constantly to do it so right now I'm gonna take a little let's call this a little station break let me show people please go support the ministry now please I mean guys listen this is way bigger way 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 you pound that same lie over and over and you repeat it over and over and over and over and over way 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 bigger this is an end of the world testimony no one would even think to tell a lie this big and we need your help some people are not comfortable with you know PayPal and stuff like that I need y'all to step up big lie it's got to be a big one this is huge this is it's literally risking my life from now until the moment that this is going to be executed <laughs> it's so huge it's got to be a big one so please so I'm gonna risk my life <laughs> I'm asking y'all to step up please financially so you can pay palace or you can send it to that address now here's the thing we are under a time frame we are now literally taking steps literally I'm not joking you know kind of like Noah had to start building the ark and the Lord gave him directions we've got our instructions now do it I've we have been guaranteed given the task of warning people and it's going to be an end time event so get ready over and over and you repeat it over and over and over and over and over until it becomes a truth in the minds of the people that are hearing the lie and it's going to be an end time event an end time event so get ready Groseluga. an end time event okay let me stop this one right here so these videos don't go too long and then people will lose focus Part two is going to continue with the debunking of Johnny Boy's Satan over the semen story. And don't fret, JJ. I won't stop using scripture in order to prove my case. As a matter of fact, I think I'll be bringing even more than I have so far. You'll be proud of me. I guarantee it. So I'll leave off with a prayer request from Johnny for Johnny. Remember, everybody, it's all about Johnny. Uh, pray for me. Pray for Johnny because Johnny's under tons and tons and tons of weight. Massive weight. Jimmy down!